Okay, um, hello Michael and um, welcome back. Um, we've, we've had a, a series of talks about um, the sort of latter half of your time uh, with your company. Um, we were, we, after the Seagull, we looked at um, La Ronde, we've looked at Handful of Dust, we've looked at those three European plays that, um, that struggled to make a big impact. You felt, felt they, were, they, they were good productions, but, but you, you sense that the Brits tend to, as you said, you said the Shakespeare, you know, if anybody ever says any other playwright, you just have to do that and say, yes, but we have Shakespeare and, <laughs> and that trumps everything. And anyway, um, uh, and you've, you've intimated that the, your experience with shared experience is starting, not that you knew this, but is starting to come to an end. Yes, but you see, what was interesting is in the early years when we were doing all the Arabian Nights and touring and exploring with Bleak House and discovering all these new ways of working, uh, we were known and admired, but as a very good fringe company. And as we got more accepted and more known and came into London, we suddenly, I felt that our, our work was somehow not being allowed somehow to be quite so exploratory because of playing in bigger theatres coming into London and a certain requirement to find material that the audience would like a little bit. And I felt that we were, I could even feel, even with those three plays, uh, the European plays, that, that uh, I was trapping myself in my own construct. Mm -hmm. Every year, another Arts Council tour with the productions or productions that came into London, blah, 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 you see. And I could sense that at some degree. And I must have been at that point having run the company for 10 years, 11, somewhere around there, 10, yeah, I can't remember exactly. <clears throat> and I, because of Handful of Dust mainly, Ian McKellen and Edward Petherbridge were running a company at the National Theatre. At that time, Peter Hall had this uh, structure of inviting other directors to come in and have their own discrete companies within the overall company which was you know, an interesting thing to do. And I think Alan Aikborn had one and a director called Peter... Gill? What? Peter Gill? No, 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 no. He was very conventional, sort of standard, you know, quite good, that, that period stuff, very... Anyway. I know who you mean. Peter. Dexter? No, that's John Dexter, who was wonderful. John Dexter, no. No, anyway. Um, and that was very exciting and Ian McKellen and Edward were doing a season of three plays and who was Philip Prowse who was one of the designers at, and directors of the um, Glasgow Citizens at the time was going to do one production Sheila Hancock, who was going to be in the company, was going to do another production, and they offered me a third. And there was a discussion of what we should do. And I won't go into that now in great detail, but I thought it's time to do another cherry orchard. <clears throat> because also, there is another cherry orchard lurking rather disastrously in the middle of all my shared experience stuff. <laughs> and so what happened is, I, I did the three Marivaux, and uh, the two Marivaux, the Gogol and the Rosanti plays. And I think the next thing I did was a production for the uh, National of the, the, the Cherry Orchard. And I think Giles came in and directed, Giles Havigal directed something while I was there. He did, he did an adaptation of, uh, oh God, I'm forgetting names today, of Pamela. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, and you know, um, and to cut a very long story short, the Cherry Orchard got fantastic reviews. I won awards. It was just you know marvelous, wonderful reviews, fantastic. Pack the Cottesloe, all very exciting, and. 
Peter Hall invited me to come and have my own company within the National because of it. And that was pretty irresistible. So then I have this quandary of what am I going to do with shared experience? And I, I felt if, if I'm not going to be around my company, I have no right to have one. And if I'm going to work with the company of the National, I've got to be true to those. There was something about my sort of idealism and sense of, you know, of behaving appropriately and responsibly. And I thought, and also I think I felt I've been running this company for 12, 13 years and maybe it's time things come to an end. Maybe I should go. I did have conversations with, you know, the cheek by jowl guys, you know, Nick Ormerod and Declan Donovan, suggesting would they like to take care of shared experience for a year while I worked for the National, but that didn't work out somehow for them, fair enough, you know. And then I thought, well, give it up. Don't cling to things, give it up, you see. Mm -hmm. So, but before that, I'd already planned to do a production of Three Sisters for my company, for Shared Experience, which came right after the Cherry Orchard. <coughs> and it's good production. Um, it finally got very, very good reviews, but Michael Billington didn't like it very much. Uh, but it, it was all right, no, it was good, and people referred to it, and it, it was a good production. And I had a lot of my old, you know, shared experience actors in it, you know, and uh, no, it was a good production. It was okay, you know, but again, didn't go anywhere particular. And then um, I decided to leave and then I can't remember the order, but I know I was working abroad and I was, uh, I can't think where I, I, I went. Maybe it was to Israel to do something. I, uh, but I, I did one more production, which was Shaw's, well, you know very well what it was, Too True To Be Good. Oh, yes, okay, it was your last one. Yes, that was the last one I did, which you know, which was quite a nice production. And that actually got rather nice reviews and Billington liked it. It's a very spring heel production. And the actors were fine, they did their stuff, they did their tour, came into Riverside, didn't get any audiences, you know, and that was my sort of swan song. And I departed Shared Experience and went to the, national and and i felt i felt i'd made the right decision and i probably had actually you know i look back now and think what would have happened if i'd have just kept hold of that company you know and not let it go i would have had someone to go back to of course and blah 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 but i thought no and maybe i was arrogant enough to think i'll go to the national and i'll be around there. i don't know um so that was sort of the end of shared experience for me. And it's odd looking back on it now because it was a bit, not exactly a downer, but it was just, oh, mm. done that. It was odd. But all the exciting work had really been for, mo for the most part at the beginning, you know. So I, I did the Cherry Orchard in the National 1984. Uh, I did Three Sisters in 85. Um, I went, oh, I know where I went. I went to, to Heidel, uh, to, to, to um, Bergen in Norway, to Ibsen CS, and I did a version of the Arabian Nights there before I went to the National. And somewhere, the um, two two to be good fitted in with that. And um, mm. uh, that's it, really. And there we are, you know. Okay, did you... So when you'd finished Too True To Be Good, you knew that that was the end of shared experience for you? Sure, I, you know, I have to say the chronology is a little bit muddled, but I think it was because quite soon after the Cherry Orchard opened in 1984, um, Peter Hall invited me, but it wasn't going to happen until 1987. So I still had time. So it was a question of reorganizing my life and did you have anything to do with the continuation of shared experience? No, I mean, what I felt finally was that, no, I felt if I'm leaving it, I don't want to be a sort of awful backseat driver for, for the new artistic director. Whoever takes it, it's their theatre, good luck to them. 
I no, I don't. I, they, I did. Nancy Meckler got the job, and I was and I felt, and I was on the board, and I felt my only job was to support her. You know, and she took it in a certain direction. She carried on with the adaptations, I have to say, and they were hugely successful. You know, at that time, suddenly, you know. Uh, your fringe shows now could come into the West End and into the National, which wasn't quite happening w with mine. And she did some wonderful work, you know, and I was very, you know, and I was very happy for her to have it. And there was a point when I thought, I don't want to stay on the board because she needs people who can raise money for her and blah, blah, blah. And I, that's not my métier at all. And so I removed myself from the board quite, I thought, I don't want to be, you know, the shadow of the past on her, basically. So I said goodbye to shared experience. But she kept it alive for an inordinately long time. She ran it for much longer than I did. I think it had I think when it finally expired, what about three or four years ago, I can't remember, it had been going for over twenty five years, which actually in a way is too long for a company. And, uh, was there any other uh, director after Nancy Meckler? No, she was no, she worked it with oh God. Very nice woman director who's married to Ian. Oh God, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Okay, I'll have to. Um, no, they, they, they stuck with it. And then suddenly uh, they were very successful, they were much loved. And then suddenly their Arts Council grant was withdrawn. You know, and I don't know why, I've never really discussed it with anybody, but I think what they felt that they were always doing revivals of shows and going into the West and making lots of money and they, they'd been around for a long time and maybe newer companies needed the money mm -hmm. and so their, their money was withdrawn. Oxford Playhouse took them under their wing for a while but I think finally it just came to an end which you know companies do you know because nothing goes on forever and yeah times change and so forth so that was the uh, story of shared experience okay but it was where i found the chance to really explore in great detail and depth the work that i now share and keep exploring and try to employ all the time yeah. so it was a wonderful period and i have to say for the pretty much the first at least nine years it was like a sort of triumphal you know it was just joyful year after year you know there were, there were individual problems with actors and blah 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 but basically it was just a wonderful period creative and it was I, every day was an adventure and it was wonderful i had endless energy and you know and we went abroad you know we toured a little bit i mean there's, there's lots of funny stories about touring which i can talk to you about T taking the um uh uh, science fictions to Italy and things like that and uh, you know anyway <laughs> there we are um, so that can be for another time but um, no it was great it was great it was wonderful you know and I appreciate it and it's very full of happy memories and, uh, yeah. and all the very nice actors who worked with and committed themselves and were so lovely and helped me discover things really you know so that that's the the story of shared experience. Okay. All right, Mike. Well, look, we'll bring this. Uh, we'll bring this to a close because um, I think the national needs its own slot, as it were. Um, but uh, we're sort of saying farewell to shared experience now, which is, you know, a big, big part of a lot of people's lives. <laughs> yes, there's a very nice picture. We had a little sort of brochure created. And the ninth year, and there's a picture of all the people who've been involved, all gathered, sitting on the steps of the Bloomsbury Theatre. And uh, yes, it's there. It is in that book. Yeah, it was no nice people and at the time. You know, it was yes, it was it was good work. It was good work. You know, serious work. Um, you know, interesting. Yeah, good. All right. Thanks a lot. Talk again. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching um, and I hope you enjoyed that uh, that chat and if you did would you press the like button and also um, the uh, the subscribe button that would be great and if you wanted to be given alerts to when the next one is happening just press the bell button um, 
If you want to put any comments or any questions underneath here, underneath the video, please do, and at some point I will um, re-interview Mike, as it were, and put some of these questions to him. So um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.